Hey everyone, it's Don here. I just wanted to remind you and encourage you to check out the links in the episode notes for some more information and resources. And then they, they came up, the two of them, and, and said that Susie had died. And I've, n- I've never experienced this before, but my body dropped. You know, I, I just fell to the ground. I thought, oh my. Like changing of the seasons, nothing ever stays the same. Sometimes our world crashes down, all we know goes up in flames. A broken bone that heals is much stronger than before. Don't look down Keep your head up high Hi everybody, I'm your host, Don Amaro. My guest today has been entertaining folks for decades. I'm honored to be joined today by the one and only Fred Penner here on Through the Fire. Mm-hmm. You see Fred Penner, thank you so much for being here with me on Through the Fire today. Through the Fire, Don, it's a pleasure to be here, thank you. Um, You've been called an icon, I know I call you that, (laughs) uh, Minister of Positivity. I've heard that. America's hero, and your fans call themselves Fred Heads. There you go. Which is so cool. What's what's it like when you have those kind of accolades attached to your name? It it means next to nothing. (laughs) I mean, I mean, truly, because I, because that, that is not, you know, when I started, started in this business, you know, when I started performing in the early seventies and then into the family direction, you know, the latter part of that decade, I never did anything in my life saying, boy, I, I want to be, mm. I want to be the, the minister of positivity. I want to get a Manitoba order of Manitoba. I want to be order of cattle. I want any of that was not in my brain at all. It was all about how I can get on a stage, play my guitar, and invite an audience to join me in, in, in that experience. Mm. And every performance I've done has given me some kind of, of feedback you know, on, on that level where, where I feel like I've accomplished something. And, and usually it's, it's like a one, one child perspective mm. where, where there's one, one kid out there who, who comes up and, and says something, does something that it's great, I got you. We're together on this mm. on this trip. So so when, when I hear things like that, sure I'm a I'm a relatively positive guy. Minister of positive fine, you know, <laughs> if you need to find words like to describe <laughs> to describe me, well go for it, but it's mm-hmm. it's not what I'm what I'm about really. Yeah. You know, I was I was gonna say you know, with within that uh, context of, of being able to say it means almost nothing. I imagine what I, what I take from that is, is your success is not contingent on what other people say or do or how, how they give you an award or give you something. Your, that's not your success. That's not no, what I'm I, hearing. No, I, I've not uh, approached anything that I do you know, from that, from that mm-hmm. point of view. The, uh, the, the beginning of the, of the career was clearly focused on... Uh, well, you ready for a story off, off the top? Let's, let's sure. go. Yeah. Um, after I produced The Cat Came Back in 1979, um, before it had even been sold to Rafi's company, because that, that was the next step, it went to Troubadour Records in Toronto. Uh, but I, I had, and we, we did talk about this on a different uh, event, but that I had a sister who was born with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And her more than excitement, but getting deeply involved in music, in hearing sounds, she was nonverbal. I mean, she, she couldn't talk, but she made herself known, obviously. But I, I saw how music affected her to the point of tears. And as a young teenage you know, boy, seeing that was, wow. So that's, that's what music is capable of doing. Yeah. So then the philosophy of never underestimate your ability to make a difference in the life of a child became a mantra for me. 
you, I was going to ask you <coughs> your earliest memory of music, and you had mentioned the story about watching your sister engage in music as a young teenager. Mm -hmm. Would you attribute that to being one of the earliest memories of music for you as, as your in engagement in it? Or uh, No, it goes right back to, I mean, when I was very young, my parents were very much into the swing music, the, the Dorsey Brothers, the Benny Goodman, that, that world. I remember the, uh, the William Tell Overture, dun -dun 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 mm -hmm. I remember, probably three years old, going downstairs on my, like, hand, hands first. <laughs> so my, my, my legs are going boom, 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 boom down the stairs, and my hands are going boom, 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 boom down the front, but, but to the da -lum, da -lum, da -lum, da -lum, so I galloped <laughs> literally downstairs yeah. to the William Tell Overture. I did that recently with my kids and it <laughs> doesn't you? work out so well for a guy my age. No, so. no, exactly. <laughs> you got to start young on that one. Right. So here's a question. Yeah. Uh, this show is called Through the Fire. Mm. I want to talk about, and you, I'm going to open it up to you here. Is, the, is there a, a hardship or a moment in all of that, either in your career? I mean, we've only gone up to 1997 now with the end of the show. <laughs> right. But, you know, looking back, is there a moment where you were like, this is, this is a make or break season for me or a time? And there's probably multiple, you know, but I'm wondering, is there something that you look back at and go, That's, that was the crossroad for me? Well, I mean, truly, and I mentioned it already, the, the crossroad was mortality, mm. was Susie and Dad dying, because I, 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 felt, uh, I felt very inadequate as a, as a musician. I, I felt inadequate as a student. Uh, I felt... I, I, I've, I've never had... A, a, do I have self-confidence? I mean, I've gained self-confidence over the time but i've always been very self-critical as well so when when that when that change happened with you know with with susie and dad it was whew, i i'm not trained for anything i have no skills i don't i don't know how to do that i can't fix that mm. so what, what am i what am i going to do with my with my life mm. and uh and it i mean fortunately it turned really really quickly for me. I mean, that... It turned the, in a good way? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the soul searching that I did, you know, at, at, that, at that time, because I, I, my foundation was clearly rocked at that, at that moment. Was there something that you clung to to kind of pull you through that season? Was it, it sounds like maybe meditation yeah. and self-reflection. Well, it, it's certainly self-reflection. Hmm. And, and that was, you know, I hadn't been... Nobody said... Do that, you know. Find find a way to to do that that self awareness or self and you know, the meditation to figure it out. It I I'm thinking back to to when when Susie died. Mm. That was probably the most intense moment. I, I was working for how would uh, Susie have been? She was twelve. Wow. Yeah, and we knew that she wouldn't make it past you know past about twelve because right. she was born with a serious heart murmur, mm. which is common with Down syndrome, children, mm. children with Down syndrome. I imagine that would have been a scary time too, like the idea of knowing that there is this mortality looming sure. in her life. Yeah. And obviously in yours as well, seeing that coming for her, like watching that from it. Yeah. From and, as, and as the last couple of three years of her life, because her blood was so, so thick, because it was not being purified properly or well. Her, her face started to change. You know, the, mm. the color of her face was changing. Um, and ultimately, the, uh, the, the, they put her on blood thinners, on a digoxin, which yeah, thins your blood. But her, her organs started to grow you know, as she reached puberty. And, and the blood flow just couldn't, couldn't be maintained in that. So, so she mm. died. And, and I was, you know, so we, we knew it was close, but but you didn't know when. Yeah. And I was, uh, I was working for the city of Winnipeg uh, as a, a street, street cleaner. And, uh, and I was on the corner of, you, you know, on, on, the, on the, the turn off of Jubilee, uh, or uh, off of Pemina Highway going left on Jubilee. It's, yeah. now, it's now a roundabout. Yeah. Well, on, on that corner, on the south side of the street, I was, you know, I was tri trimming a tree or cutting the grass or something, and a police car pulled up. And I thought, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Mm. 
was it that chocolate bar that I stole from <laughs> Kerr's pharmacy back 10 years ago? Did they finally catch, you know? So I, I started thinking, uh, what have I done? I felt, I felt challenged there, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, then they, they came up, the two of them, and, and said mm -hmm. that Susie had died. Uh -huh. And I've, n I've never experienced this before, but my body dropped. Mm. You know, I, I just fell to the ground. I thought, oh my. And it was, uh, that, that kind, it, I mean, it's, it's not cathartic, but it's, it's a very intense thing. When you, when you hear that a loved one is gone, mm. what, what your whole, you go through shock. You know, I was certainly in shock. Mm -hmm. For a bit, and then, uh, and, and then you start putting the pieces back together. Mm -hmm. And and my, my father was, you know, had cancer. He was uh, an alcoholic all my life. And so after Susie, after Susie died, uh, about six months later, my, my father passed mm -hmm. as well. And uh, and and he uh, he was alcoholic. So there are many sobering. Uh, that's the mm, odd, 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 yeah. odd. I should pick that word. Yeah. Uh, moments that we we went through. You know, really, really. Uh, he, he was he was a loving, caring dad, but but he had, he had the disease, mm. and uh, and and no matter what we tried to do, mm. you know, he he couldn't change out of that, and he smoked, you know, a pack pack a day plus of export plain, mm. no filter. His fingers were, you know, heavy heavy brown yeah. stained and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, there were some hard memories of, of that, and mm -hmm. then he, uh, he had cancer, um, and, and a year, less than a year later, he died. Mm -hmm. so, so there, there it was. So you when know, you I, say mortality was a, was a major yeah. thing for you in your journey and, and, and wrestling with that. Yeah, yeah and, and, and not feeling that I had any capable skill to to go any farther i don't know what if i hadn't had the music i don't know where my life would have mm. gone uh, i would not have been a successful civil mm. servant i don't think <laughs> i don't think so uh but the yeah the the mortality and and this is this is not uncommon i i've talked to other musicians along the way who have lost you know lost parents early because i was 21 years old yeah you know i'm, I'm just a young man mm -hmm. And, the, and there it was. Well, let's let's see if this works, hmm. you know. And and the I mean the, the blessing for me is the timing was perfect. You know, I, I have mm -hmm. lots of, of young people coming up now and saying, I I'd love to do what you do. I'd love to get into mm -hmm. that. And I I can't begin to give them much advice, right? Other than you you have to follow your bliss. You have to follow your mm -hmm. heart. And come up with a, with your philosophy of why you want to do that. It's not mm -hmm. if you if you're doing it for money, forget it. You're you're going to lose right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. You have to do the it money because could it's come. But yeah, yeah, but that's not the that's not can't the, be the catalyst exactly. Yeah. And uh, so I, I I just gained all of these little snippets, and I I appreciate in me my ability to to see these moments. And to take them in, into my heart, into my spirit, you know, little little things that can happen that will, oh, there's one, oh, there's mm -hmm. another one, and that and the, these keep feeding me, mm -hmm. in a in a very real way al along this along this path. And mm -hmm. it, but I I I'm the luckiest man in the world. I mean, <laughs> 45 plus years of being allowed to do this. I often say you know? for my journey, I've often said. Uh, I've had the audacity to believe that I could be successful as a musician. <laughs> Absolutely, I, and 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 I concur with your audacity. I don't think I've ever said that before, <laughs> but it sounds good. I um, you, you, Fred, you can use that. You can use that, Don okay, Rowan. Thanks. I, I I mentioned this to you before too in conversation that there are some similarities between us in terms of you've said that at a as a at a young age you had to take on responsibilities far sooner than you should have had yeah. to as a young. Young, young, maybe even a teenager. I don't know when that no. would have been for you, but I, yeah. I, I relate to that story because that was a lot of, like mine. And and it yeah. and that is common enough. You mm -hmm. know, the parentification. It's called parentification of children, where where a child is given the responsibilities that the adult should be handling. Mm. 
and uh, and and that's it, it's it's not right to do that. Parents have to, but but that's oh, I mean it's so common because mm. tr trying to find your way in this world is is ridiculous. You know, I, I mean, getting getting being an adult, let alone a child. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Learn, learning learning to be learning to be a, a, a good human being, you know, before you even, even get into a relationship, and then learning to be a, a, good, a good mother or father, you, you don't have, you generally don't have a temp, template for that. It's, oh, I'm now going to have a son. What does that mean? What am I, how am I going to, how am I going to take anything out of my insanity, you know, out of my confusion about who I am, and pass it on to, to another human being, you know, and, and I think that's the cycle that keeps keeps going, and, and, and learning to be uh, honest ultimately with yourself, mm. and being honest with your kids if you if you mess up along the way, yeah. you know, and, and not being afraid to say, I'm really sorry, you know, I I'm that's, sorry, that's I'm so sorry point. that I did that. Yeah, you know? for, for my kids, that one of the things that we, I, I grew up with parents that never said sorry. Yeah, no, and who did yeah. really? <laughs> But I think I apologize to my kids every day, <laughs> which might be a bit of a, a sign of the kind of parent I am. But I, uh, I find myself in that place of that vulnerability and, and, and really just saying to my kids and looking at them and just saying, I messed up. You yeah. know, I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. Exactly. And, and that's a beautiful lesson for them mm. to know. So you're, you're being a good dad when you say that. I'll remind them. Yeah. <laughs> you got vast experience in all areas of, of, of this world of, of music and entertainment and, 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 and doing what you do. I can only scratch the surface, I'm sure, in the time that we have together here. Uh, but I want to ask you two last things. One, what are you up okay. to now? What are you doing these days? What I'm doing these days, uh, immediately it's Kids Fest. Mm -hmm. you know, I've done three festivals in the last couple of weeks in Surrey, Vancouver, and here. Uh, continuing a little bit with the, with the 40th anniversary Cat Came Back Tour on the 18th of June, depending when this comes out, I, I either am going to or have just done uh, the Cat Came Back at a theater in, in Victoria. We played Nanaimo. So there's sporadic touring that's mm -hmm. happening over the summer. Right. But, the, but the big part is, uh, is my, my life transition has happened where, where my wife and I now have a, a half acre of green on Vancouver Island. And we're growing stuff, and and I'm I'm listening to birds every morning, and I'm listening to the calm, and I go out and and, and look at the stars, and and there's there's a lot of um, of very sensitive awareness of myself in nature. My my wife Ray Ellen is is a, a, had, a Buddhist practice has been a huge part of her life, mm -hmm. so we meditate together sometimes, but every morning for some, some degree, either 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, plus five minutes of metta. And metta is a particularly focused meditation for someone in your, in your life who, who you feel is in need. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can be to yourself, you can give yourself metta, or you can give it to others. But it's that, mm -hmm. it, it's basically prayer, you know, mm -hmm. but, but getting into that and, and just finding your your calm, your balance within your own spirit, and then then starting your day and doing doing what you're going to do. I've mm. um, I've got lots of music still inside of me. We'll see when that when that comes out. I'm uh, I, I've your written, last album was 2017. Yeah, 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 and it and it, it did did quite well. Mm. You know, in in positioning it, it won Western Canadian Music Award, uh, Folk Music, and Juno. Mm. That year, so it was. Uh, I'm really pleased with that one. It covered covered some pretty interesting territory. Mm. But but there's more. There's more to come. I'm not done that. But I'm I'm still. I still feel I have some something to say in this world. Some vibrancy. I, I want to write. I'd like to you know get some of my my stories and perspectives down on on paper and. I'm encouraged to write Surprised a book. that hasn't happened yet. I think well, you, that really should. Yeah. Well, I, I, it, it could have by now, if I had been comfortable in, in asking a ghost, in finding a ghostwriter, mm. someone I, who, like you, I could tell the stories to and you can translate it. Mm. But I'm, I've been a solo act for such a long time, you know, regardless of playing with lots of right. other people. 
but I, I... It's a new frame of mind. It is. I, yeah. I, I've not collaborated on, uh, on many projects along mm. the way, musical projects. Mm. But uh, so, so when I think about writing something, I, I think about me writing it. You know, someone can edit it, but, but I, I need to find that in myself. Mm. So I'm, I'm writing down stories, things like we're talking about here, yeah, yeah. and eventually perhaps a... My, my daughter Haley, who I think you've met along the mm -hmm. way, she, uh, she gave me a task and said, by the time you're 80, so I've got five years to go here, <laughs> write down your story. Mm. You know, so I've got five years to write okay. it, so there we are. I look forward to that. <laughs> me too. Fred, a last thing I want to ask you okay. today. I want to ask all my guests this question. Okay. Um, a favorite book, podcast, documentary, could be music that you're listening to these days that uh, or you're tuning into? Oh, uh, favorite book. Favorite, e either one, yeah, one, one of those any of those. All, yeah. Well, I, we've been listening to a thing called Smartless. <laughs> I it, know the one. Do you? <laughs> yes. With with uh, with, Will Arnett. with with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, Sean Hayes, and Sean Hayes. Yeah. So that that's that's a regular go-to. You know, yeah. some evenings if we don't flip on the Netflix or whatever, you know, we will sit and listen. Yeah. You know, it's like like going back to the old days where you listen to the radio. Yes. So we listen to Smartless. There's a, a wonderful a Buddhist teacher. His name is Joseph Goldstein. And, and he does he does meditations, talking about his mm. experiences along the way, or you know, speaking with Dalai Lama or whoever. So we'll we'll sit and listen to his perspectives in life, and those are those are are, are very deep and meditative, and I I, mm. I enjoy dipping in there on occasion. Mm. I'm I'm not not reading a whole lot right now. I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll find a nice mystery or something, mm. but. Uh, well, Fred, I am always appreciative of the time you give to me and yeah. the projects that I'm working on, whether it be uh, this or another podcast or playing an actor in one of the little movies I'm making. <laughs> yeah, so, right. um, thank you, Fred. Well, I, I, I appreciate you, Don. You're, you're spending some really hard energy <laughs> in making these things happen. I mean, you know, there's other things you could be doing in your life, but, <laughs> but, you're, but you're, you're trying to bring something forward out of, out of others, myself included. Mm. And uh, and uh, I I applaud your I applaud your work and wish you the best. Oh, thanks, Fred. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it.